Hey guys, and welcome back to Legends of Idle On, and I am hunting for that World 3 Splicer. This thing has been some work here. So, got the World 2 Splicer, trying to get the World 3 one, and we're going to have to put in some work here on the thermistors. Probably going to have to spend a lot of candy, so this is about to get real. We'll see how many thermistors I actually have to kill to get the splicer. It's probably going to be kind of insane. So let's see what we can do. I've tried to max out my luck as much as possible. But I think it's still probably going to be uh, pretty wild there. So as you can see, I got the perfect 5.0 luck. I'm already at 1.44 million thermistors. Uh, let's see how long this is going to go for probably going to be quite a thing here but i'm pretty determined to spend as much candy as necessary here to uh get this so 1.77 mil luckily a lot of candy stashed up and then a lot of candy i'm getting from the easter event so we'll just see how many it takes i've just been going candy after candy after candy let's see there it is I, to be fair, I skipped a number of candies, <laughs> as you might have uh, guessed there, but I'll still show you here. So, uh, there it is, Journeyman Recipe, Double Barrel DNA Splicer. New item, and let's see how many it took. 2.63 million thermistors, just to give you an idea, if you're going for that yourself, you may have to grind it for a little bit or have some candies ready to go, but... To be fair, Easter event provided a lot of candy, so that may have you covered. And it requires Ice Age 3 and the uh, double barreled, I mean, sorry, the World 2 Splicer, uh, which wasn't super hard to craft. Just need some ghosts. Uh, you know, which you've already been, if you're already in like past World 2, you may already have a bunch. If you push World 4 really fast, you might not have many ghosts, but for a lot of older players, I mean, you know, I spent time in those zones so like farming those zones so uh here we go world three splicer and uh there it is you need level 140 actually to equip it which is kind of high relative to what a lot of players have not you know not high for end game players but not all my characters can equip it let's put it that way so we'll go ahead and equip that and I can now start uh, actually pushing world four a little bit. So here's the uh, situation. Still got the snakes there and uh, gonna actually start pushing world four now. Trying to uh, get up there a little bit on some of these ones, although they seem to be much harder than some of the others. So, uh, yeah, maybe back to World 2 sooner rather than later. So I can get to the uh, Sand Giant at some point. So, uh, just going through these. Now, I will give a bit of a spoiler alert because it is uh, May 10th. Obviously, the whole flashy thing got nerfed and I was going, I'll admit, I was going for flashy there. So, yeah, we'll see what I do, but I ended up investing quite a bit of effort into getting flashy just to have it get nerfed uh, recently uh, for the uh, flashy boomer tactic. Apparently, it got nerfed. So, you can see I'm a little far behind here still. We'll try and catch up. Um, going through cogs, 2.63k player XP bonus. Yeah, looking for some stuff to uh, replace here. I think at some point the X Kogias are going to get replaced on raw XP. Um, but they still have like good build bonuses and stuff. So I'll keep them around for that. Probably going to start buying extra Cog slots soon. And then just stacking up all the good purple ones I can get. As someone in the comments pointed out, probably good to just stash every good purple one I get. Just for future uh, build situations. 
So starting the grind here on my Maestro, I'm starting to use the Crystal Farming along with uh, Crystal Countdown and the Chocolate Chip Cookie, which has been a pretty OP strategy here. So I'm using that in this video. And I was basically using it to just uh, quickly cover most of each level and then I was going and using candy on the rest of it. And you'll see here in some future videos I really start to get into this strategy. And uh, it begins to make progress on my maestro a lot quicker than I've ever made progress on my maestro. So getting some quick levels here. Very quick levels. Uh, so you can see my current levels here. Got some work to do, but we have a good strategy now to do that work. So we're just going to put it to the test. And uh, the, so farming crystal mobs, very good active XP as well. As a good skill XP with the uh, crystal countdown, helping the skilling levels. So basically you equip the chocolate chip cookie and that gives you a 75% chance. It's a lab item, lab chip. Gives you a 75% chance to have another crystal mob spawn when the previous one dies. And that really makes it a lot more useful to farm the crystal mobs. And the crystal mobs give a lot more XP than the regular mobs do. So you see the AFK XP per hour. It's not really the same though when you have all these active XP bonuses on and you're farming the crystal mobs like this, it's really a lot higher. Like my XP seem to instantly really go up to some real like number of like hundreds of millions of XP per hour. It's a lot, lot faster when you're doing this strategy. So seems to be a way you can quickly level up characters, potentially even the non maestro characters, although especially for maestro, and if your skill levels are kind of low, you can use the Easter candies to quickly just pump them up if you do have really low level skills like I do. Especially worship I found very easy to do for a while. At least anyways. Um, and for worship I found it best to actually use Maestro Transfusion. That was gaining me a lot of extra XP, but only on worship. A lot of other skills Maestro Transfusion seems to be not very good with. But I found it was helpful on um, worship. So up to 100k uh, cooking efficiency there on that kitchen. I'm going to be doing what someone else said to do where I go through and get level 11 on each uh, recipe. I will be doing that soon. It happens at some point. I can't remember which video it's going to happen in, but it happens. And I kind of like that the uh, farming, uh, the uh, recipe, dang it, what are they called? The seasonings was uh, nerfed a bit or it was capped because that actually helps. I feel like it helps me out a bit just because I wasn't able to sit there. I didn't want to sit there and do it like nonstop. So I'm kind of glad from that perspective because it kind of evens out the uh, pacing a little bit. So, uh, as you can see here, already progressing a lot. Level 127. You can see I just jumped up a bit. There uh, went like another three worship levels up. Um, let's just say this strategy was uh, really, really working well. And as soon as I realized how good the strategy was, I've been activing, I've been active running my maestro with that crystal farming setup. Um, like quite a number of hours per day. I've been leaving it on overnight. Uh, just turning it off for like a couple hours per day uh so yeah really working pretty hard on the uh, maestro at the moment and you'll see that pretty soon but i was getting some instant progress there on it still farming newbie cogs at this point but i kind of stopped farming them at one point because um i don't know it was just a lot of cogs to soar through and most of them weren't very useful but occasionally I did get a really useful newbie cog. I got some, you can see I got one there that was a uh, 57%. So that was useful, but the thing with the newbie cogs is that other than the XP cogs, they really don't offer any cogs that you'd 
use, I think, outside of that. So didn't feel very worth it. And I've been setting up the uh, traps here even better. Something weird, though, that happened to me today was that somehow I tried to collect the traps and without realizing, I accidentally had, like, deleted all of them. So I came back and they all said unused. So don't know why that was, but um, it's kind of weird. I accidentally deleted all of the traps and all of my characters and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to... I was just lazy. So I'm like slowly replacing them all because it just was annoying. But most of the time, Eagle Eye, uh, the Trapper drone is actually really good. It's actually really, really helpful. Especially because you can place the traps on whatever you want without having to actually go there. So I like that aspect. And it seemed like, well, Okay, I'm not really sure what's happening in this clip right now. Um, let's see what we were doing here. Oh, I guess it's the end of the video. My bad. All right. <laughs> Sometimes I put a long clip at the end of the video, and it's just like, yeah, you're supposed to just, like, eventually realize it's the last clip. And, uh, yes, say your goodbyes. But, so anyways, major maestro progress in this video. You'll be seeing a lot more of it soon. So leave a like if you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know if you're crystal farming as well with crystal crystal countdown and i will see you guys in the next video